Good morning, everyone. Uh, let's just start over. I cannot hear you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. It's so, so good to see you on this beautiful Sunday morning uh, to worship our God here in, this, uh, love, in God's loving presence. I welcome to those who are joining online uh, with us today. And I'm very happy to report back to you about our Vacation Bible School throughout the week we had. We had an amazing time and fun time with 160 kids and 105 volunteers. And we invited the students to come to sing one of the songs at 9 o'clock service. And they did an amazing job. And I know one way or the other you supported uh, these ministry as a volunteer and you donated lots of items through Amazon wish list and monetary donation and you, with your prayer. So we all did it together. So I thank God for this meaningful ministry opportunity and especially uh, the pet, uh, Julie, uh, Julie Robertson, the director of our children and uh, family ministry. She did an amazing job. So can we give a thanks to God with big hands? I'd like to uh, get your attention on our announcement between pages uh, 8 through 11 in our bulletin. And every resource can be found on our website at headonfieldemc.org slash now, including our uh, worship bulletin. So we are preparing for the kickoff Sunday on September 8th the first Sunday after Labor Day, when the ministry picks up their, our regular rhythm, regular schedule, including small groups, children's ministry, and youth ministry. And all children and youth will be invited to join the blessing of the backpacks for their uh, new school year. And so if you have children and students in your life, please bring them on September 8th. And also on that day, the hot breakfast downstairs will be uh, resumed. Um, and we are collecting school supplies to ensure that every student in surrounding area has enough supplies for their new school year. And today is the last day of collection to deliver the backpacks and supplies on time. And so, but it's not too late. Uh, there is a the box, you can drop it off the items in the church bridgeway, or you can just online order online with the Amazon wish list. Last but not least, if you enjoy singing with others, you love music, we invite you to the New Jersey Master Chorale Summer Sing Ins and the Ice Cream Social on August 29th, it's Thursday uh, at 7 o'clock. New Jersey Master Chorale is a community choir performing concert twice a year in the spring and in the winter. And no commitment is required, but come and enjoy music, uh, with, uh, enjoy music and ice cream with the others. Okay. So I encourage you to uh, check out the rest of the announcement in your own time. And invite you to stand if you are able to join our responsive call to worship. You can find the words on page three. As we gather in this sacred moment for a sacred purpose, let us make the most of our time together. As we sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, let us make the most of our time together. As we respond to the melody in our heart, let us make the most of our time together. We have come to worship the Lord, our God. Amen. Let us sing together our hymn number 68, when in our music, God is glorified.
getting waved to up there by our kids. I'd like you at this time to just close your eyes with me and take in a deep breath and let it out as we go to God in prayer. Loving and gracious God, we gather today with joyful hearts as we have spent this past week surrounded by the laughter and energy of the children who have discovered your love through our Camp Firelight VBS. We thank you for the gift of these young lives, for their curiosity, their creativity, and the way they remind us of the simple yet profound truths of your grace. As we come together as a family of faith, we ask that you fill this space with your Holy Spirit. Guide us to worship with childlike wonder and deep gratitude. Lord, we ask for your peace to fill our hearts, for your wisdom to light our path, and for your love to surround us. May your grace sustain us, and may we find comfort in your everlasting arms. Open our hearts to receive your word and our spirits to be renewed by your presence. May our worship be an offering to you, O Lord, and may we leave this place strengthened by your love and ready to serve you in all that we do. We ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please rise if you're able as we sing our next hymn, Spirit of the Living God, found on page 393 in your hymnals, and we're going to sing it through three times.
Good morning. The word of God for us today is from the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verses 15 through 20. The scripture can be found on page 194 in the New Testament of the Bible. Be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. So do not be foolish, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit as you sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, singing and making melody to the Lord in your hearts, giving thanks to God the Father at all times and for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Hannah. I want to get your attention on page six in our bulletin for our sermon note uh, as you follow along. Have you ever thought, oh, I wish I had more time? <laughs> when I rush to leave home in the morning but running late, when the due date of the assignment is imminent, but it's only halfway done. It's almost the end of my vacation time. I often say, oh, I wish I had more time. Yet, in reality, I don't have the ability to make more. Time never awaits me. It keeps going on without my permission. How we feel the passing of time can be very different when we do what we like versus when we do what we do not like. People say children usually experience time slower than adults because they have more eventful lives. Is it true? I don't know. I don't remember. <laughs> I confess that I have recently experienced how addictive YouTube-style short forms can be, as I can easily keep scrolling up and up, watching them for hours. On the other hand, time goes so slowly when I work out, as I am not a big fan of exercise. Clocks can tell us what time it is now, but they do not tell us what time is. Time is such a broad concept, and we tend to understand time as a linear order of events from the past through the present and into the future. One thing we can be sure of, though, is time keeps moving and changing. As the sun, the essential marker of time keeps moving and changing. I'm talking about time because I find meaningful relations between time and wisdom in today's reading, Paul's letter to the Ephesians. He says, be careful then how you live, not as unwise people, but as wise, making the most of the time because the days are evil. In previous verses, Paul listed the fruit of the unwise people, including fornication, impurity, greed, folly, and gossip. And he urged them, sleeper, awake, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. The way how he encourages the readers to live as wise is to make the most of time. In other words, take advantage of every opportunity given to you now, not for your own benefit or gain, but for the glory of God, who is the source of everything, the source of every breath we take. We live in an age of intelligence and smartness. We love knowledge and want to be smart, but being smart is different from being wise. Think about all the devices we have. Anyone who have smartphones, smart devices, smart watches, Smart TVs, smart refrigerators, smart cards, <laughs> name everything smart. It will sell well. And we like smart things and we like smart, smart people. 
However, have you ever wondered why they are not called wise phones, wise TVs, wise watches, wise cars? I asked the same question to the children at Vacation Bible School last week while I was teaching in Bible story class with the amazing team of people. And one of the students answered, it is because smartphone sounds better than wise phones. And I think it's a brilliant answer which I cannot disagree with. These devices are smart enough to tackle tasks, but they do not make decisions. They respond to the command received. What is requested, however, is up to the users. If we use them wisely, they can make our lives more convenient and easier. However, if we use them care carelessly, they can cause more harm than good in people's lives. So being wise means more about how we use our knowledge, skills, and gifts and resources for good to help people and care for others. Some say time is one of the most valuable commodities in life. Although 24-7 hours are given to everyone the same in a day, we all use our day and time differently in each season. Time is free but priceless. Time can, time can, we can spend time, but we cannot store time. Time is limited and unlimited. Once we have used it, we can never get it back. No one can buy more, even if they have a lot of means. And we never know just how much of it we have left. It is highly unpredictable, and it can end at any moment. Wisdom is being aware that our time is priceless and limited, so we make the most of time when it's available. It produces humility as for humans, and the wise grab every chance available now, not tomorrow or next time. But wisdom is not related to one's academic status or IQ, age, or success. We don't need to be a top student at school to be wise, or we don't need to get all older or be rich to be wise. And sometimes children are wiser than adults, aren't they? My grandmother, who went through a challenging time in Korean history under Japanese occupation and the Korean War, only graduated from elementary school, but she was the wisest person I've ever met. She passed away when I was a middle schooler, but she always had the answer to my question I brought to her. She was a pillar of my family. And I remember she prayed and sang songs day and night. We shared, uh, she stayed with us at the end of her life, and she stayed uh, next to uh, of our rooms. And I heard my dad say how she helped him make the right decision when he was weighing up two jobs available to him a long time ago. Instead of taking a job with an immediate higher salary, she advised him to see a long-term plan, long-term benefit of the other, even after retirement, and it worked very well. And Proverbs, one of the wisdom literature in the Hebrew Bible, chapter 9, verse 10 says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and the knowledge of the Holy One is in sight. Proverbs chapter 2, verse 6 defines God as the source of all wisdom. For the Lord gives wisdom from his mouth come knowledge and understanding. The fear of God refers to a sense of awe in God's presence and our submission to our Creator, obedience, joyful obedience to our God. It doesn't refer the fear of uncertainty in our lives. So knowing who God is and who we are is the beginning of wisdom. God is our Creator, and we are not. We live like we are the center of the whole universe, but we are not. We live like we control the life, but it's not so true. Wisdom is trusting God to be always with us along the way on our sunny days and rainy days, no matter what. 
And it is important to note that the root of Hebrew word wisdom is not limited to intelligence, but includes the skills of the hands and feet of craftsperson and artisans. We can access information at our fingertips, and our pace of life is insanely fast these days. It pushes us to act like there's never enough time. We are constantly rushing to meet our desires and needs, to support our families, prove our worthiness to be needed, and to, to be productive. Culture teaches us that you can survive on your merit, and it can give you mobility in your social standing. Friends, no matter what, we do our best in a situation. And there is nothing wrong with being smart or productive because resources are limited. But if we choose to spend all our time and energy chasing after them, if we let others define who we are by what we do, what we have, or what others think of us, it's like chasing after the wind and missing the mark. We would miss so many meaningful opportunities available to become and grow as the people who God calls us to be on our journey together. The wise take advantage of every opportunity available right now to love and to serve. And we grow in wisdom through practice and experiences in lives. David Brooks' book, The Social Animal, the hidden sources of love, character, and achievement attempts to explain how our, how our human mind works, especially the role of the inner mind. It, the unconscious realm of emotions, intuitions, biases, longings, genetic predispositions, character traits, and social norms. Our con unconsciousness is where our character is formed and street smarts grow. His, his research found that, quote, we are not primarily the product of our, of our own, quote, we are not primarily the product of our conscious thinking. We are primarily the product of the thinking that happens below the surface of awareness. I wish our mind work simply but our brain do not work like computers, which stores data in order. It's not like first come and first out. Our learning is the process of internalizing relationships between pieces of information and knowledge we acquire. There, there are specific breakthrough moments forming internal connections with these pieces of information and in turning them into bigger chunks of knowledge in a network. In the processes, once we acquire core knowledge by reading, watching, experiencing, or listening, it marinates playfully in our minds. We willfully try to organize it and merge it with other data, whether we are aware or not. Many researchers believe that during sleep, the brain consolidates memories, organizes the things that have been learned that day, and reinforces the changes in our brain. As we repeat these processes, we are getting better at uh, organizing principles and recurring patterns. We developed paradigms and mindset in the field we are trained in. Have you ever thought Economists think like economists. Have you ever thought lawyers think like lawyers? Have you ever thought teachers think like teachers? Have you ever thought pastors think like pastors? I think it applies the same in our faith journey. As believers hear the word of God more and more, it marinates in our mind. And as we practice love more and more, Christians begin to think like Christ, live like Christ, and love like Christ. Another characteristic of the wise is filling their hearts with the Spirit and singing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs. Do you sing because you are grateful and joyful, or do your heart become more grateful and joyful when you sing? It's a question like, what comes first, the chicken 
or an egg? And my answer would be, it doesn't so matter because both are true. I often have experienced the power of music and the songs when I am down. Naturally, I am the person who see half empty glasses than the half full glasses. When I thought about my decision-making process recently, I found I tend to make decisions to avoid regret or to avoid the worst scenario. When my anxiety goes higher, and when I think about the worst case scenarios possibly happen in my life, I always listen, try to listen to music and contemporary or traditional that helps. I think it's comforting because I, as I'm reminded that I am not the first person or the only person facing these struggles in life. Many people ahead of me have already gone through it, and I find hope that I will also go through it. The circumstances may not change. However, my attitude and perspectives have changed a little bit more positive and hopeful. The songs help us become rooted in the love of God and shift our eyes to Jesus. But as the pain and suffering are so real and deep in our lives, how can we even sing a song during unexpected challenges, accidents, diagnosis, violence, conflict, hatred, division, and hostility? Even is it possible? The songs of heart are not limited to the song of happy or brightness. They include the songs of lament, the songs of sorrow, the songs of honest cry out to God. These authentic songs of our hearts bring us, bring us back to God as we experience God's love in our deep heart. We sing not because everything goes well, but because the songs of heart that can help us grow and nurture a sense of gratitude to live another day. I don't know if you ever watched the, the Korean drama, Korean TV show on Netflix or somewhere. So a couple of years ago, there was a drama, Because This Is My First Life. Its title is Because This Is My First Life. It reminds us everyone lives their lives for the first time. Every teenager lives their teenage life for the first time. Every 20s live their first their 20s. Every 50s live their 50s for the first time. 60s, 70s, and 80s, and 90s. No one is perfect, but we learn from our mistakes, and we try to grow more and more throughout our lives. So I'm wondering that what opportunities do we have to live another day more meaningful? What chances do we have to grow in love for God and others? We don't need to wait until everything is perfectly ready for us. We don't need to start to week. The wise seize the day in whatever way is possible to shine more light on the people around them in the world. No one can read others' mind. Can you read my mind? No. I cannot read your mind unless you tell me. No one knows unless we express our love. So let us tell how much we love and care for our family and friends and people around us today. And friends, today is the most precious gift from God given to us. I am so, so grateful for each of you as we share our time together this specific morning, uh, Sunday morning. Let us make the most of the time to love and to serve in this desperate time. Isn't life too short even uh, only to love? Yeah. Life is sure to love. So let us spend, let us make most of our time to grow in love and grace and forgiveness and peace in the world. Dream big, pray long, and work hard as we continue our journey together to follow our Jesus Christ. Amen.
In our busy lives, especially with balancing family life, juggling work responsibilities, or even serving at church, it's easy to feel like time slips right through our fingers. But Paul's message in Ephesians reminds us to be intentional with the time that we have, to be wise in how we use it, and to make the most of every opportunity God places before us. Giving our offering is one way we can be wise stewards of what God has entrusted to us. It's an opportunity to invest in the work God is doing through our church, to support ministries that nurture our children's faith, and to reach out to our community with Christ's love. As you give today, think about the impact your generosity can have, not just today, but for the days and weeks to come. Let's be wise with the resources we've been given, making the most of this opportunity to contribute something greater than ourselves. The ushers will come around now to collect your tithes and offerings, or you can give electronically through our app, by text, or online at haddonfieldumc.org slash give.
Loving and generous God, we come before you with thankful hearts, bringing our gifts and offerings as a sign of our devotion and gratitude. You have blessed us abundantly, not only with material resources, but with a gift of time, time to serve, time to love, and a time to make a difference in this world. As we present these offerings, we also offer ourselves, our time, our talents, and our lives. Grant us wisdom, Lord, that we may serve you faithfully in every moment you give to us. Help us to recognize the opportunities around us to be your hands and feet, bringing hope and love to a hurting world. Amen. Please remain standing as you are able and join me in singing our closing hymn, Now Thank We All Our God, found on page 102 in your hymnal. we take is God's gift for us. Shall we turn to our neighbor and say, every breath we take is God's gift. Every breath we take is God's gift. I love you. I love you. I love you. Because today is God's special gift for us to love and to serve. I don't know if you are good at saying I love you or not. Some of you, maybe you are good, but I'm not so good at it. 
But I know our expression of our love is not just saying I love you. Maybe doing something our loved one wants us to do or at least stop doing what they do not want us to do. <laughs> right? Yeah. Right. Stop doing what they want. Yes, yes. And so, and on the way going out, you might be able to find some handmade thinking of you card that our uh, the card ministry team made. So if you have, you, if someone is in your heart today, please, please feel free to grab the card and send them, to, uh, send them to, send it to them. Let them know that you love them and you care for them and you support them. So go in the love of, uh, sorry, go in the love of God and the grace of Jesus Christ and peace of the Holy Spirit and be the sign of love and hope in the broken and hurting world. Amen.